So, I've given you narrative, I've given you didactic, right? Um, uh, inductive or wisdom style. This is the one that's hardest. And I'm, uh, I'm going to try preach this tonight. Oh, no, I don't think I am. I was, gonna, I was working on it. Um, preaching as expositing the text in an inductive or wisdom form. This wisdom form means naming and developing a variety of thoughts or ideas that emerge from the text. Uh, one conclusion or one def definitive statement is not the goal of this style. Rather, this style opens the scripture text to a variety of thoughts and ideas from a variety of angles and perspectives. Um, I call it the inductive or the wisdom style. If you're an inductive teacher, you put out in front of your students a variety of thoughts and ideas, and you pick and choose with them, discern which one best works, okay? Um, my image, uh, the image I used was pearl, poly I, is like a string of pearls. So you just line out a pearl, 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 pearl. The only unifying thing is about the text, but it's not, it's not step one, step two, step three. It's just these statements and ideas and concepts. And some people will resonate with this and others are like, what was the point of that, right? Um, how does it work? Identify the text, highlight key words or phrases or main points or learnings from the text. Work through each point or learning, treating each one as bursts of insight and discrete packages of God-given wisdom. Illustrate each one. The only needed coherence here is the text itself. Go, Janet. Is this a little bit like preaching as a lexio? Yeah, yes, exactly. And actually, the inductive style, nicely done. Um, the, like, the style actually emerged out of the base communities in liberation theology in Central America, where the Catholic priest would, because these are um, peasants and illiterate, he would read the text to them and say, what is the Spirit saying to you? And individuals would just start to, um, Paulo Freire, see si, Paulo Freire um, in Brazil, um, would, would use this as a teaching method. He would put a text out there and people who were quote unquote illiterate, um, as be, was teaching them how to read, they would just start telling their own wisdom. Hence the wisdom or inductive style. No one can say you're wrong, right? But they would say they related to their own lives. And it may not be a, th a clear thread. The only thread is the text. Okay, so, um, did I, I think I did this. Um, oh, good. With me, please, out loud. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Identity. How did Jesus know who he was? Some scholars think in this moment, his baptism, this is when he first knew that he is the Son of God. When I was seven years old, growing up in Honolulu, we had a game that we would play with our grandfather who we were scared of. And the game was never be alone with grandpa because he's way too scary. And once, when I was seven years old, my older brother and younger brother, unbeknownst to me, I thought we were all together in the same room and grandpa was visiting. They left and I was by myself watching TV and then grandpa came into the room. I turned around and he was blocking my way to get out. And he came up to me and he said, Raja, hands. I put my hands out and he grabbed them. And he said, ah, soft hands, bad hands. And he said, say your name. And I said, Roger. He said, no, say last name. 
Nishioka. No! Say it with pride. Last name. Nishioka. <laughs> That's name. Never bring shame to name. Can I go change my pants now, please? <laughs> Identity. Knowing who you are. For John the baptizer, baptizing was part of the Jewish tradition. For thousands of years, before Jews could go to temple, they would perform what's called mikvah, which is the cleansing rite. Even in the desert, they would find water, and they would not be able to go to worship until they were cleansed. Those waters of baptism, they cleansed. They washed sins away. It was part of their identity. And I would do probably three or four more of those. Now, and interesting, I didn't think I was going to do it, but I just did. So literally, I've changed locations. Did you see that? When I was doing each of my little statements. You could do that, unless you're bound by the pulpit. Okay? But all I'm doing is I'm putting three or four or five little statements out there that deal with some of the key themes in the text. Identity, water, washing. Ooh, the next story I was gonna tell was when I was in Guatemala and I was in a Catholic church and the priest, um, the baptismal font was, have you seen this? The baptismal font, Ricardo, have you seen, I don't know if this is Brazil tradition either. Um, the, the baptismal font was a coffin. He was baptizing babies. And he takes the baby and he says in Espanol, right? He says, I kill you in the name of Christ. And the baby is screaming and he uh, douses the baby in the coffin full of water. And then he brings the baby out and says, I raise you to life in la vida, in the nombre de Cristo. And he says, I raise you to life in the name of Christ. And I thought, everybody there, we're like, we're, Protestants were like, ah, he's dousing a baby in a coffin. But I thought, that's exactly it, because in Christ, we are dead to sin, and we are risen from the dead. And I thought, wow. And so I probably would have told that story about baptism as well, right? So you, so you do these four or five statements, and then you sit down. You stop. And some people are going to say, like, what the, heck, what the heck was that? Where's point one, point two, point three? And others of people are going to be like, wow, right? Inductive wisdom style. I think this is uh, more coming to us from parts of Africa and Asia and Latin America and the Pacific, Polynesia, etc. I think it's refuting the European logic that we've been taught, right? And it's powerful to watch and see, but it takes time.